But today we're going to be telling you everything you need to know about a tender on a cruise ship. Mm. Well, before we get started with the video, we ask that you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We would really love to have you as part of the Sea Lake Journey crew. So we're going to be talking about tendering. What exactly is tendering and everything that you need to know? Mm. Well, first of all, not every cruise ship is allowed to dock at a pier in the port. And there's two reasons why. Yes. And one of them is because that ship is just too big. That ship is just too big to park there. Yes. Or the waters at the port area are too shallow for the ship and the ship will run aground. Oh, I thought of another reason. What's another reason? Sometimes the dock has been damaged. Oh yes, like in Juneau, Alaska. Yeah, so they don't have enough room for all the ships. So somebody's gonna have to park out yonder in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> well, nowadays, many cruise lines are building what they're calling mega ships. And these ships are massive. They're wider and longer than cruise ships in the past. And some ports cannot accommodate the extreme size of those mega ships. Right. Yep. So what they got to do is they got to park out and have these little boats called tenders. So the ship will have to anchor offshore. Yes. And smaller boats will, called tenders, will take the passengers from the cruise ship to the land. And sometimes they use uh, boats from where they're at. There's lo little local companies that will bring their boats out. Sometimes they're mm -hmm. single decker, sometimes they're double decker. And sometimes they're little ferries that they use for regular transportation, uh, transportation. around the island. And other times they use the lifeboats, believe it or not. Yes, yeah, so sometimes the cruise ship actually takes the lifeboats that they have and they drop them down into the water and they use the lifeboats. We've actually been privileged enough to do a lifeboat as a tender before. Yeah, we, they putting us, when they were putting us on the lifeboat, I thought, uh-oh, is this a good sign? <laughs> is there something they're not telling us today? It turned out it was okay. So this whole process is called tendering, but Carnival prefers to call it water shuttling. Mm. So whether it's called tendering or water shuttling, it, what it means is that a smaller boat has taken you from your giant cruise ship to the mainland. These rides are always free. I was going to ask you, how much does this cost? <laughs> the cruise line will never charge you to ride a tender. Well, that ends my game. I was going to stand up there next time and go, ticket please, it'll be five dollars, <laughs> ticket please. <laughs> now, the tendering process can be quite complicated. So many cruise lines prefer to have people board the tenders based on priorities or the number system. Yeah, because when you got 3,000 people trying to get off a ship, and let's say you got eight water taxis or water shuttles that hold maybe 250 each, they try to group you into groups of 250, either by giving you tickets that are numbered, or sometimes they label them like grouper, or octopus, <laughs> or squid. Going, now calling the squid, now calling the squid. So if you got a squid ticket, you go up there and you're one of the 250 people that get to get on that next show. Now, typically they do have people that have scheduled shore excursions, use the tenders first, mm -hmm. and then those people that don't have a shore excursion for the day, that are just basically going to get off the ship and explore on their own, you will be on a later um, group that is boarding on the tenders. Also, if you're a platinum or diamond or elite mm -hmm. or in a suite, you'll also get priority boarding then. Right, so the main reason for this is because many times without a system, you'll have too many people standing in the hallways or on the stairwells mm -hmm. trying to get to the tender embarkation area. And this can cause a safety issue. Yes, that's true. You know, the stairway's all clogged up. People start tripping around on each other, <laughs> falling down and <laughs> dropping their chocolate milk on the carpet. We can't have that. <laughs> Another thing that strongly affects the tendering system is weather conditions. Oh, big time. Let me tell you what, 
we've been on some tenders. It was it was a ride. It was like, oh, they're going to charge us for this because this is like an excursion right here. <laughs> so if weather conditions are poor or if the seas are rough or the winds are rough, the cruise line that you're sailing on may choose to cancel that port for that day. Yep. The ports that are most likely to get canceled are the ports that require tenders due to inclement weather. A tender is a great way of transporting the passengers from the ship to the shore, but it also has some downfalls to it. Yeah, it sure does. One of them is, uh, it can be a long ride. Some of them are only 10 or 15 minutes, some of them are a half hour, mm -hmm. and uh, you might get stuck sitting in the sun the whole time. The tender pulls alongside the cruise ship and they tie the tender to the cruise ship. Mm -hmm. And then they put a little gangway out and passengers use this little gangway to leave the ship and board the tender. Well, that tender can be bobbing up and down in the water because even though it's somewhat stable, it's still a smaller boat in open water where the cruise ship itself is not moving around, but that smaller ship is. And not just up and down, sometimes that thing's also gonna be moving forward and back and forward and back and up and down like this. And sometimes it's trying to pull away. It's tied, but it's still gonna be moving. So it's gonna be do doing all this. It can be So a rough. lot of times they'll say, please make sure you use the handrail or they will actually help you by holding your hand and helping you on board. Now passengers that are, have mobility issues with walkers, canes, and crutches, this could be quite challenging for them. Mm-hmm. But... We've seen people with crutches fall down on those things just because of there's so much movement. But if you are in a wheelchair or a scooter, you may not be allowed on the tender at all. That's true because uh, it's just too much of a risk. Too much risk for injury to you. And so what you need to do is if you know you're going to a port that is having a tender, you need to go to guest services and explain to them your mobility issue and go by the guidance of what the cruise is suggesting for you. If they're suggesting that you do not get off the ship that day and you've purchased a shore excursion, then you'll need to see if that shore excursion can be reimbursed to you. Yep, but if you're lucky, the weather's going to be great and you're going to be able to get up there and go. But just be prepared, if, especially if you're in a scooter wheelchair, that it may not be a safe thing for you that day. Now, right here. Well, we've hoped you've enjoyed our video on the tenders and everything you need to know about tendering. I'll tell you what, though, on a good day, the tender can be just fun, too. Sitting back there on the boat, feeling that fresh air blow across you at 40 miles an hour as you head to your great shore excursion. And don't forget, this is a time where you can take a picture of your cruise ship out in the ocean. Yeah, it's like the best time to take a picture of your cruise ship. It's great. Yes. Well, until next time, we'll see you around the channel. See you around the channel.